are your church, O oh God. Birth by the prophetic womb of eternity. Anointed to do your will. Moving in power, in authority, in might. Rescuing the captives. Setting those beyond bars free. Proclaiming the good tidings of our Lord Jesus Christ. We are strong. We are powerful. United, nothing can stand our move. This is your church, O oh God. Redeemed by the precious blood, not with gold and silver. The church that you have entrusted with eternal wisdom. This church to whom you have given your name. By which men will be saved. The name that is above every other name. This is the church to whom you have given all authorities. In the heavenlies and in the earth. To speak from your counsel. To bring the prophecies of old to fulfillment. Preparing the way of the coming of Messiah. We give you praise. Under your covering, let the weak say, I am strong. Under your right hand, let the poor proclaim that I am rich. And even those who are lost, they may jubilate in celebration because you have found them. We give you praise today. We stand together hand in hand, tied together in the bond of love, strengthened, sealed by the Holy Ghost, inspired by the Holy Spirit. We are more than able to conquer. We bless you in Jesus' name. Somebody give a praise to the Lord this morning. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Can we celebrate the worship team? Let's give them a clap offering. Wonderful. Praise the Lord Jesus. Just the ushers, if there is anybody outside, beside the ushers, this is the time to come in. There's a time to serve and there's a time to sit down and be taught. Amen, amen, amen. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. I miss this church. I think this is the most amazing church in town. And in the, Are you agreeing? Come on. If you believe that, give a clap offering to the Lord. Come on. It's your church. Thank you, Lord. Ah, this is wonderful. I miss you all. All the amazing leaders and people of God. God bless you. Can we celebrate the life of Pastor GB? I mean, amazing. Come on, you can do better than that, church. Let's celebrate him. Just wonderful. God bless you. God bless you. Praise the Lord. I heard the Wednesday were powerful. Can we put our hand together for Heidi? Just amazing work. God bless you. And I know this Wednesday coming is Pastor Jacent taking on on the baton. I mean, you guys are moving forward from faith to faith and from glory to glory. Tell your neighbor we are going somewhere. <laughs> Praise God. You know, I'd like to give you a few announcements and I would like to give you a word, but I just feel a word in my spirit for Brother Kennedy. Stand up. You know, that posture of yours, last week I was in a dream. And I was standing on the pulpit, and you were standing up like that. 
dressed with that red shirt with a black jacket. Just this is a deja vu. And I spoke this word to you. God will give you a new key. I see an office. There's a new key. It is just right there. And that new key you come with a new authority. You've been waiting a long time. But the key has come. That's what I said and you receive it. And let it be so in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, somebody. Okay, let's go for the announcement here. I'd like to talk about Saturday. You don't want to miss Saturday. I tell you the truth. Miss anything else, but don't miss Saturday. Because if you miss Saturday, when you come back to this church, you will feel like a stranger. That's what's going to happen. Because Saturday we're going to activate, and Sunday it will be not. Sunday, come with your lunch. Hey, Sunday, come with your lunch. Don't be in a hurry, because you will prophesy. So by the time everybody here prophesy, it will be probably 2 o'clock. We'll, be, uh, we'll have to get out of here for the Spanish church to come in. So Saturday, come for activation. Are you ready? Yeah. Prophet Okema and Martha, are they here? Don't miss it. You need to be here. We're going to have an amazing time Saturday. It will be wonderful. And in fact, I will introduce you a book that I've written, and this is the title of it. It's called Prophesy. Praise the Lord, somebody. Yeah. And then Sunday, we're going to have a, a Holy Ghost prophetic Woo. service will be wonderful. Even the children will prophesy. Because out of the mouth of babes, what proceed from it? Praise. Praise. Hallelujah, somebody. I want to let you know also, uh, they wanted me to rectify this. Some people think this uh, ordinations or pastor, very soon coming bishop. Hallelujah. My bishop, praise God. <laughs> It is July the 22nd, not June, all right? It's July the, tw somebody say July the 22nd. July. So we have this apostolic mandate, that's the way we call it. So the Saturday at 4 p.m., I will have an appointment as an ambassador at large to the U.N. Now, I will explain that to you, all right? I know many people are going, so which country is he representing? <laughs> okay, if there is a country, it has to be <coughs> Canada, of course. But uh, an ambassador at large does not representing, represent a country. An ambassador at large represent, is appointed to the UN or to the EU or the European Union, but in my case, it is to the UN. Now, you are being attributed roles of influence. It can be in the counselings, it can be as a spiritual counsellor, it can be in the human rights, speaking for those who have no voice and so on. So all this will be a part of my package and my agenda and much more that I'm pushing for them to add on it. But you are assigned a seat at the UN in New York. And I told you even if the seat is the back seat by the door, I'm okay with that. All right? I just want to make sure my foot are in. And by the grace of God, somebody say revolution of grace. Revolution. Don't you think we're in revolution of grace? We spoke at the beginning of the year, God will do in one year what was supposed to take how many years? Did you see an acceleration here? If you haven't seen it yet, receive that now. Because as Pastor GB said, we still have six months to go. We, we are not done the year now. In fact, I will provoke you. This is the moment where you plant another seed. <laughs> you know when we were talking about seed, I said now they will say it. Apostle, we don't see him now. He come back, he just talk money. Don't worry about it. I'm talking about seed, not money. Yes. <laughs> ah, yeah, yeah. Some people are squeezing their pocket. Don't worry. <laughs> I, I don't take an offering because I prophesy. I'm just telling you, it is a good time to plant a seed. Amen. Okay, we'll come back to that if God allowed us to. So anyway, that will be on the 21st at 4 p.m. If you can come, come. You know, it's not, you know, it, it's important, but, you know, it's not a crowd thing. If you want to come, come and be a witness to what God's going to do. I will encourage you to come. It will please me for sure because you're my family. You know, these people are blown away because usually you do those things at the UN there in, in, the, in New York. And he asked me, so where do you do I said, I want to do it at church. He said, huh? I say we, we need to do a church. He said, where? I say in Calgary. Calgary, you are loved. Amen. All right? 
And I say, anyway, you are a bishop and a man of God at the end of the day, so it's not a strange place. He said, wow, I'm impressed. That's the first time we do something like that at church. I say, yeah, I'm a church boy. I love church. If you see me, all you see is church. If you don't love church, you can hang around around me. I'm telling the truth. We will end up being strangers to one another because church is all that we know. Church is all we talk. Church is all we live for. Nothing else. So if you come with some other philosophies, very soon you will see we're not connected anymore. Because it's church. Somebody say church. church. That's why I'm El Hajj too. Hallelujah. I'm loving church. Do you love church? I really love. Sometimes I feel like, wow, Jesus, you are so blessed. You're married to the church. I can only take care of it for you. But you are the one who's married to the church. The church is a wonderful entity in the spirit. Yes. In fact, the church is so powerful, Jesus gave his authority to the church. Yes. So how can you not love something that has so much power in the earth? <laughs> of course, I know we are so carnal, we just see the church in a natural way. Uh, you know, I don't like this worship, and I don't like this carpet. That's the way you see church. This guy walk on my toes. This guy didn't like the way he does things. You know, why, you know, I'm leaving this church. You know, you don't know what church is because you are too carnal and too unspiritual. When you discover the church, really what the church is, you will fall in love with it. But as long as you see the church in the imperfection of people, you don't know the church. You are a Christian not knowing who you are. Okay, d'accord. D'accord is in French. <laughs> Did I do the announcement? I'm good. Praise the Lord, we are good. So 21st July 4th, don't miss it. And then July 22nd, hallelujah, they will still be here with us, and that man will be preaching. I'm telling you, when he came to uh, our graduation of the doctorate, this guy talked, and I feel like, wow. He put the Bible in such a way I thought, I, I thought I was good to put the Bible in such a way that people feel like, I, I didn't know this exists in the Bible. But I found somebody who put a Bible in a governmental way. Everything in the Bible for him is government. He sees prime ministers in the Bible. He sees governors in the Bible. He sees, I mean, everything, he read it and he show you how oh, this is a governmental affair. I love that. So get ready. 21st and 22nd, Hallelujah services. Pastor Michelle, we will celebrate you. It will be wonderful. And we're going to release you to go and save more Spanish people. Hallelujah. We need more of those in heaven. Hallelujah. Arturo, am I right? Backing up and we go. He's my pastor. Get ready. Praise the Lord. You know, when I stand on the pulpit, I see churches only. To tell you the truth. When I look, I see ministry. I see churches. I don't see human beings. And that's the apostolic calling. That's, all, that's what I see. Uh, uh, <clears throat> the board, the day we pay, you guys pay off this mortgage. I say you guys, all right? You guys in charge. This is your anointed. The day this mortgage is finished, please let me know. Just please give me just a call no matter where I am. And say, okay, we are zero mortgage here. We will keep 30 people here. Only 30. <laughs> we all go out do something for Jesus. It's an apostolic house. It's not a local church. Hallelujah. Some of you say, you know, but I'm not a pastor. Hey, guess what? You can be an assistant pastor. You can be an elder. You can be a deacon. You can count the money. You can be an administrator. You can be a communicator. You can be a piano player. You can be a support. You can be a second role. You have something to do. Even the children will be released with their parents to do something for Jesus. You know, if we sit here, we'll be so frustrated. The more I go around the world, the more I understand God gave us a secret that is eternal secret. While I see most people trying to grow big churches and keep everybody together, I feel like what is wrong with me? I just want actually to scatter them. Dangerously. Like the wild oxes, fox of Samson, burning down the field of the enemy. That's the way multiplication happens in reality. God said, multiply, subdue the earth. In other words, don't stay in Eden, reproduce Eden and spread out. 
Then you get territories. Every five mile cross point, every two kilometers cross point, every city cross point, every territory. Where is this cross point? Churches with influence. Every one of you need to be activated to have a revelation of the apostolic ministry. And you all who are business people, you are under that umbrella. Your business should be multiplying too. Because the apostolic ministry is not just for church. It should multiply your womb. It shall multiply your business. Now I have one business because I'm under an apostolic covering. This business needs to be pregnant very soon to birth something else. And this one needs also to birth something else. Do you understand? So you are under a covering where you don't need to work hard. You just need to receive where you are to submit under it and you will see the multiplication begin to happen in your life. No matter what you put your hand upon. But if you don't get that, you're a local church, you will have a local business. Hmm. Somebody say, I hear you. Okay, let's read a few verses and prophesy a little bit and we go eat food. Praise the Lord, somebody. Act chapter, Act chapter 14, verse 19. I don't have my verses, I'm just saying them. You help me on the screen so we can read it together. No, not let's put this one first. Let's start it with. Uh, Act chapter 12, verse 6 to 10. Can we read that together, church? Yes. Are we ready? Yes. You see, when you're reading the word, your spirit is getting ready. It's building up your faith, all right? So let's read together. And when Herod would have brought him forth, the same night Peter was sleeping between two soldiers, bound with two chains, and the keepers before the door kept the prisons. And behold, the angel of the Lord came upon him, and a light shined in the prison. And he smote Peter on the side and raised him up, saying, Rise up quickly. And his chain fell off from his hand. Continue. And the angel said unto him, Gird thyself and bind on thy sandals. And he went out and followed him and wished not that it was true which was done by the angel, but thought he saw a vision. When they were past the first and second ward, they came unto the iron gate and led it unto the city, which Hallelujah. Today I want to talk to you about the power of the prophetic word. There's power in the oracle of God. More than you think. I spoke to you weeks back, without the prophetic word, purpose is unknown. A lot of people around today are turning around the same mountain and wondering, God, what do you have for me? I, I, I don't even know why I'm here on this earth. What should I do? What should I not do? What did you call me? Where should I live? Where should I not? You see, and so they end up going to personal development and then they get developed and nothing come out of it. Then they go to the psychic and they go to the wish doctor. You understand? They don't know. Because where there's no prophetic word, purpose is unknown. God has birthed a church that is prophetic church by its nature. You don't make a church prophetic. It is already prophetic. Unfortunately, it is, but it doesn't know. So we don't try to make a church prophetic. We try to activate the prophetic in the church because the church is already why? Because God is prophetic. 
He knows the end from the? He can foretell. He knows the end from the beginning. God, in his omniscience, number eight, knowing everything, when he speaks forth something, it cannot go back to him void. That's why on the poster, we said, you can be the voice of God. In fact, you are the voice of God, but you just don't know about it. So my assignment in this season, it is to awaken the prophetic seed that has been dormant in each one of Jesus Christ's children. From the one who just got born again now, or the one who's been a Christian serving God for years. Because the spirit of prophecy is the spirit of who? Of Christ. So if you have Christ in you, you have the spirit of prophecy. Acts chapter 2 came to fulfill Joel chapter 2. That in the last day, God will pour out his spirit on all flesh. Now, he trick it down now to the sons and the daughter and his maidservant and his servant. They will have what? They will prophesy. They will see vision. They will dream dreams. That is the inheritance of every child of God. From John chapter 3 verse 1, I spoke to you last time about three elements to identify who you are. Nicodemus has an office as a Pharisee. His name was Nicodemus and his function was a ruler. You get that? You remember that? So, when you don't know who you are, when you don't know your name, I'm not asking you to go change your name that your mom and dad gave you. But you have a name in the spirit. But that name, spirit being knows you. It can be coffee or not coffee. Your natural birth name could be your spiritual name, but not automatically. Find out. That's why a lot of people are struggling to even find out what God has for them. Because what God has for you has a lot to do with your name. So, somebody said, God changed Abraham's name, and you call him what? Abraham. God never changed Abraham's name. Abraham's father called him Abram. God just revealed to Abraham what was real, real name. As far as heaven is concerned, they knew Abraham by Abraham before he was conceived in the womb of his mother. So it was not a new name. It was his real name, just revealed to human beings. So Abraham, we know. Paul, we know. But Saul, we don't know. The demon spoke and they said, Paul we know. Jesus we know. Not Saul. Because Saul allowed him to function in the affair of men. But he has no power to fulfill an assignment because the assignment is connected to that person who live in Heidi. That person who live in Heidi. That person who live in Carl could be called Carl or not Carl. But your destiny is not connected to the Carl outside, but to the one who live in Carl. When Pharaoh was about to mess up with the wife of Abraham because he lied about her, he said she's my sister. Pharaoh was about to give some mullah and get the wife or even kill him. And in the dream, God spoke to Pharaoh and said, it's amazing, I love the word. He said, this man, he didn't say Abraham. He said, 
This man that you are trying to get his wife, he is my prophet. He said, this man, there is an office in him. You can touch him. But I will punish you not because of him, but because of the office in him. That's why on Canada Day, honor the authorities. We have a sheriff here. Pastor Kofi is sheriff. In him, there is an office. That office is sheriff. In the perspective of God and church, it's pastor. All right. You can criticize Kofi. You can point the finger at Kofi, but don't point the finger at Sheriff Kofi. You're catching me. <laughs> you see, God has no problem that you speak again, Carl. He has a problem that you speak again, Pastor Carl. Office, name, function. The reason God disciplined Marian and Aaron is not because they just insulted their little brother Moses. It's because they attacked the office that was in Moses. Your office... Okay, let me put it this way. You're going to catch me very soon. You will pass when you die, but your office never passes. The office of the President of the United States, George Bush, the father, was in that office and he died. The office remained. And then Bill Clinton came in. Then he left. The office remained. Then George Bush, the son, came in the same office and he went away. But the office, what? Then Obama came in the same office. He left. And the office what? That's what God said. Don't play with the office. You can insult the person. But if you insult the office, then the problem begins. Let me tell you something else. Somebody say Judas. You know when you say Judas, nobody want to call his kid Judas Iscariot. Have you ever met a kid that called Judas Iscariot? No. He has a bad reputation. He is a worship killer. He is a thief. Everything else that's bad is on him. He sold Jesus for 30 cents. Less than that. Somebody said Judas was in the office of an apostle. He was an apostle. Even Jesus could not point finger at Judas. He knew he was a thief. Yet he never slandered him. And said, Peter, be careful, he's dangerous. <laughs> never. Until he said, the one I'm going to put my hand in the same, in the basket at the same time. He could not slander that thief because of his office. Office. Judas died, but his office remained. The Holy Ghost couldn't come until somebody take the vacancy and fill up the role up. Holy Ghost couldn't come. Because there was an emptiness in the office. And then they have to froze and choose who's going to replace Judas. Is he dead? Yes. Yeah. Is the office remain? Yes. It's a vacancy. They have to fill it. Yes. Be careful how you handle office. Amen. Amen. The way you talk again, the police and the prime minister. We are Canada Day. I want to throw that one in before I get to my message. 
Canada Day, don't play. You don't like Trudeau, pray for him. You don't like Donald Trump, pray for him. You don't like your president, pray for him. You don't like your pastor, pray for him. You don't like apostle, pray for him. Do not point the finger at the office. That finger will be cut off. Okay, all right. Even the evil Judas, Jesus handled him because God is bound by his own laws. Jesus doesn't break the laws of God. He's bound by his own laws. Yet he was a crazy bad boy. Yet his office protected him. Am I speaking? Yes. Somebody told me, you know, Trudeau is a young kid, he's 43 or something. I say, you see, when, no matter your age, when you enter an office, it cancels your age. Yes. <laughs> Woo! Your age does not matter anymore. Your office cancels your age. He's just a kid and he's, he's a pastor or an evangelist. He's just 19 years old. No, 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 no. He is in that office. God will say it. God won't even say your name. He will say it. This man, this guy, he is my prophet. He mentioned the office. <laughs> he said, don't play with the office. That one, I will kill you. All right? He said, this man is my prophet. If you touch this woman, you will die. Be careful how you talk to police people. Oh, just because I'm black, that's why they did that to me. No, 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 cool down. <laughs> you know what? Let's be real. I was in Montreal. Of course, I'm trying to know the city. <laughs> and uh, I'm driving my car, and then suddenly I see the police. Behind. I mean, I felt like, what the heck is going on? I, I didn't do anything wrong. I think Quebec laws are different than Alberta's, all right? <laughs> he came out just nicely. I mean, you look at this guy in real life, body to body, I will crunch him in two minutes. <laughs> I mean, he's five feet skinny little guy and stuff. But he came like this and I was just relaxed. I feel like, this is officer. You don't play around with office. You can talk about the individual, but this man, the government of Canada have invested authority in him. If you messed up with him, you are messing up with Ottawa. So from today, many people don't live a long life because they don't understand what I'm saying. They speak again, their mom and their dad. Do you know it's an office? That's why you don't call them John. You call them dad or mother, mom. As an office. It's, in fact, it's the first office. The first office is a father and a mother. And then you dare to criticize, and, and then you wonder why your days are shortcut and you always struggle with stuff. No matter how they treated you, at the end of the day, you have no business to fight back against the office for your own good. But we are in a generation that's so rebellious from the beginning. In fact, they call it independentism. Do what you want is your right. Sure, we have right. But your right should never bring you to a place where you despise the office that rule over you. Okay. Praise the Lord. We just read about Peter, so let's talk about Peter now. <laughs> I love this portion of scripture. He is laying down in jail. In fact, the next day they will kill him. Somebody said he's on the death warrant. Tomorrow is his death. And he knows it. He's not ignorant about it. How many people here losing sleep because of one bill? Losing sleep because my husband did not kiss me twice. <laughs> losing sleep because nobody hugged me. Nobody appreciated me. I don't feel special anymore. I can't sleep anymore. Losing sleep 
because they don't have a job. This guy called Peter is about to be killed the next day and he's sleeping. <laughs> Talk to me, somebody. Am I communicating? He's about to be put to death, not beaten. Death. In fact, James has been killed already, so he knows error doesn't play around. And he's in jail with bodyguard here, bodyguard here, chain on the leg. I mean, this guy, he has chains everywhere with guards sleeping on his side and one guy blocking the prisons. And you see, by the time that you get to the outdoor, there's another gate and another gate and a few other gates. And he's in the midst of the in, he's in prison in prison. He's in the inner chamber of the prison. So he's four times in prison. When you enter the first door of the prison, you're already in prison. Right? Then he went to the second one. He was in prison, prison. Then he went to the third one. He was in prison, prison, prison. Then he went out to his cell. He was in prison, 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 prison. Four times in prison. With shackles, guards. And he's sleeping. You have just one bill you didn't pay. Or your friend did not give you a hug. Then you lose sleep. Okay, let's get back to that. You know what the difference? You need a prophetic word. Really, that's, the, that's what I'm trying to get to. The only thing that makes Peter sleep in the midst of prison, 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 prison. And what a type of sleep. You know, I'm a kind of guy, if the room is not dark, every little light, I wake up. Now, this guy is sleeping. The angel came with the light of heaven. Not the, this one. Heaven light. The one that blinded Saul to turn him into Paul. Sometimes your natural eyes have to be blinded for your spiritual eye to be open so you can change your identity or your status. So now, here is this man. The light of heaven permeated through the prison. It didn't wake him up. Seriously? Did, did you see how he was sleeping? And he didn't take any sleeping pills. <laughs> ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Until the angel has to, not a human being, no human being could wake up this guy. Do you know why? Because when he was sleeping, only a spiritual hand could wake him up. Because he was not sleeping in the natural, he was sleeping in the spirit. Okay, all right. Dig deep. And then he woke up. Think about it for a minute. I want you to envision all your struggles that make you angry, mad, frustrated, fearful, discouraged, panicking, throwing tantrums. No, no, please envision everything, everything. And compare it with a guy who's about to be killed tomorrow. Do you know the reason you panic for your bills? It's because you know tomorrow you will still leave. <laughs> no, 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 no. If you know you're going to die tomorrow, do you care about your mortgage? Seriously. You won't give a rip. You will not worry about my phone bill because I know tomorrow I'm going to. So the reason you are afraid is because you know you still have life to live on this earth. Let's see here. See why he's sleeping. John 21, 18. Here's what happened way before this situation happened. Somebody say way before. You know your prophetic word will always come before you need it. I, I need to put this right for some people to get this. All right? Now, I read this also and I was so mesmerized. Verily, verily. This is Jesus speaking. I say unto thee, when thou wast young, 
that girdedest thyself and walk whither thou wouldest. That English is very powerful. <laughs> In other words, when you are young, you dress yourself. Everybody here this morning, you dress yourself. I don't think we have an elderly person to a place where they have to dress him. Your hands are functioning, your feet are functioning, you dress yourself. That's what he was saying. He said, Peter, when you're young like you are, you will put your clothes on. But when you will be old, you will be so old, you will not be able to eat and dress yourself. Somebody else will have to dress you. Somebody said, what a word. Nobody will be excited about such a prophetic word. I mean, why he didn't prophesy to Peter and say, Peter, that says the Lord. In three days, you will receive the Holy Ghost and you will preach such a fiery message. 3,000 will be born. Oh, what a prophetic word. This is a real word. Now we are talking. Jesus didn't prophesy that 3,000 will be safe. He didn't. He avoided all the glorious prophecies he could have given to Peter. And he went and he gave him a prophetic word that's not even exciting. Is this, this is not exciting. You, know? you are young. You can dress up yourself. But, Pastor Kofi, the time is coming where you will be so old, you will not be independent anymore. You will need somebody to dress you up. Ah, that's very humbling prophecy. It doesn't even look like a prophecy. I'm preparing your heart. Because the prophecy you despise, that the prophecy that will save you tomorrow. <laughs> so now, Peter feel like, if you read before, Jesus prophesied on John. And John's prophecy looked more powerful. That's why Peter was jealous. Peter said, what about me? Give me a word too. Give me a word. Give me a word. I want something you know, I'm going to be the leader of the church. So my prophecy is supposed to be more powerful than this young boy, John. John is a young boy. So give me something more. John's prophecy was so powerful, mine has to be more powerful. And Jesus said, you want a word? Okay, here it is. You are young right now. After you will be so old, somebody will have to dress you up. So you, Peter, you are so strong right now, one day you will be weak. Yeah. You are so independent right now, Peter, you don't need anybody. But the time is coming where... You will need people to even put your dress on. In other words, they will feed you to wash you. Me, Peter? The rock? Yeah, yeah. Very humbling prophecy. Yeah. That one you don't give an offering. It's not very exciting. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, not knowing that one day Jesus knew that he would be in prison. Not just a prison to pay a penalty of three years but death. And it will be rushed. In fact, because of the Sabbath, they extended it, not to offend the Jews. He was supposed to be put to, be put to, to death right away. We say, okay, we're going to give two days. Can you imagine two days of torment? Knowing he won't change his mind. And now, Peter is in prison. He wants to pray, no anointing. Because in some situation, you can pray. The problem is so problematic. Yeah. It inspires you in fear and worry. At a point, you forget all your verses. You don't need to know to say, oh, Father, in the name of Jesus. No, 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 no. All that stuff erased from your mind, erased from your heart. You have no strength to even say, hallelujah, Jesus. Yet the devil thinks, now I got you, you can pray, you can worship, now I got you. Not knowing there is a memory. You know, oh my God, I'm speaking to somebody. You know when a prophetic word is given to you, you don't need to speak it, you just need to remember it. <laughs> Peter just remember. Peter was laying that, oh my God, I can pray, I cannot sing. The worship team is not around to build the atmosphere for me. The intercession team is not here to pump in the front line. Oh my God, I need a... No. Peter lay down and suddenly he remembered the prophetic word that he despised. 
that didn't look powerful. He said, eh, Jesus gave me a word one day. It didn't look really serious. In fact, I was so offended at him because little John has something more powerful. But he's told me that I'm young and I can gird myself. But the time is coming. Did you see what the angel told him? Yes. What the angel said? Put on your clothes. Yes. The angel knew the prophecy. Yes. Amen. Do you know when we prophesy to you, angels are listening? Yes. You know why? Because they are the one who will minister to fulfill the word. Yes. This amen is too weak in this church. Yes. It is true. Because when we prophesy, we speak to men and we command angels. So this angel remember that one day Master Jesus said to Peter that he will not die young. So therefore, I will come in agreement with Peter to make him know we are in the same business. Peter, you have a memory. Let me refresh it by telling you, put on your own clothes so you can know it's not prayer that delivers you this time. It's not worship that delivers you this time. It is what? It's a prophetic word that is delivering you. <laughs> Hallelujah, somebody. Oh, I feel fire. Now it's a prophetic word that is operating where prayer went to silence. And you don't need to declare it because you have no strength to declare it. You don't need to fire power. You don't have a strength to fire power. You don't need to seal it with tongues. You have no strength to seal it with tongues. All you need is the brain. And the Holy Ghost begins to work. Why? Because the Bible says it will remind us. Yes. My God, hallelujah. All that I need sometimes is the Holy Ghost to just remind me. And devil, you are in trouble when I remember the promises of God in my life. I don't need to speak them. I just remember that I will not die, that I will live to proclaim your goodness. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Hallelujah. Hey. I just have to remember. And then he remembered. I said, wow. Praise the Lord. Jesus, forgive me, man. I thought this prophecy was just a pizza prophecy. But now it's delivering me from the death warrant. <laughs> Are you hearing me? How good it is to have a blessing to have a house when you're going to die without living in it. It's a greater blessing to save your life so you can believe for the house. You know the story now? He stood up like that. Put on his clothes. Say, oh, actually I'm dressing up myself. I don't need help. I'm still young. This word is working. You see, when the prophetic word begins to operate and heaven come in agreement and the angelical beings are released to fulfill because his word will not fall to the ground and go back void without fulfilling what it was sent for. Now, the same way an office does not pass, the word doesn't pass until it's fulfilled. There are words over your life today that was spoken to you 10 years, 15 years. You think that it's over. But all God wants you to do today is a memory. It's for you to remember. This word is still yours. It still have your name on it. It still have your address on it. It still have your assignment on it. It still have your destiny on it. It is my word. Somebody say it's my word. No matter how long it's been, this word is still pregnant with potential for fulfillment to secure a testimony. My God, I'm preaching good this morning. Are you hearing me, somebody? As the word of the Lord is full of power. Yes. Just a memory. Ha, ya, 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 ya. Ha. One day, I was sitting having a celebrated pity party regarding my son. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. No, no prayer, no prayer. I'm not talking about fire power. No, no, no. Self pity party. You understand? And suddenly, my memory begins to walk. My God. Shaka. 
20th Avenue. The old church was on the right. There was a red building. They just painted it now brown. We live there temporarily. You were not far, Joseph. You were not far from there. And my wife was pregnant. Big belly. In fact, it was the biggest belly she ever had for all our children. Because that boy carried magnetism power. And then we're sleeping. She's seven months pregnant. Suddenly, I'm dreaming. I woke up at night. I said, oh, I shouted. My wife woke up. We all stood up and sat on the bed. And I said, are you okay? She said, are you okay? I said, yeah, I just had a dream. She said, I just had a dream too. Yeah. I said, what did you dream? She said, no, 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 you tell me what you dream. <laughs> Smart woman. <laughs> huh? Just in case if you, God is rebuking you because you don't treat me well. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> what did you dream? <laughs> I said, I dream about the baby. And she said, me too, I dream about the baby. I said, no, I'm not talking about Raphael. I'm talking about the baby. She said, yeah, I dream about the baby. I said, somebody was talking to me about the baby. He said, yeah, somebody was talking to me about the baby too. I said, okay, this is interesting. I dream about the baby. I just dream about the baby. We just wake up from the same dream. She just wake up from the same dream from the same bed. Now I'm saying, so what did the person say? He said, no, 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 you tell me first what the person <laughs> said. And the person said, and this baby in your stomach will be my prophet. And he will touch white and black people. And then my wife began to cry. He said, that's the same word I heard. Hallelujah. So whenever the devil felt like he get my address, I go back. Yes. I spoke to you about the different type of prophets. There are prophets who are born prophets is one of them. Because like Jeremiah, before I conceive you, before your mother conceived you, before you were conceived in the womb of your mother, I have what? Call you. I know you by name, and I call you as a what? Prophet. So Jeremiah is a born prophet. He's not to become a prophet. He's already a prophet from the womb. Elisha is a serving prophet. In other words, he was not born to be a prophet. He was born under the covering of a farmer. Elijah's family, they are farmers, taking care of cows and farming. That was his anointing. Then Elisha came looking for a replacement. And he passed his mantle around him. And he said, mm, I smell a greater dimension of authority versus what my fathers have. He then said, I'm going to bring both together. He said, let me go kill everything I have here. I'm done with this one. And I'm going to serve you until I tap into your office. In other words, it's by serving an office that he was able to enter an office. That's the other type of prophets. And I talked to you, of course, about Amos, who was not even a prophet. But by circumstances and need, God anointed him to be one because of a need. What word do you remember today? When you're about to throw your towel, you know, last night I was in the plane and I have a dream, and this name is kicking in my head. I don't even know if this person is from this church or not. Probably you know the person who was called like that. In fact, it sounds so much like the name of Alex, but it was not. Alex's family name is Mutugi. C'est ça? Oh, sorry, I'm in French mode. Is it that? This one was Murugi. Muri, Murugi? Murugi? Not Mutugi, Murugi. Do you know somebody here that their family name is Murugi? Murugi. So why are you not left of the end? You know a person that's name is family. And I saw this person running. Tuku, 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 tuku. And they were tired running. Is the person is from the church? No. She's not from the church? Okay. Tell Murugi. Huh? She's in England, but you know a person. All right. Is she 
I, you are from Kenya, I know that. Where is she from? Kenya? Okay. I, I saw her running like a marathon runner. Tiki, 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 tiki. And the person was tired. Very tired. Was about to stop, and suddenly water began to fall on her. And she became so powerful, just like Elijah. Empowered, and she ran so fast, I opened my eyes, and the plane was landing. Tell Murugi, not get tired because there is a new, fresh anointing coming upon her life. That what she was about to give up, God will re-energize her supernaturally. And this time will be an acceleration upon her life to achieve what other people are still waiting to have. Tell her that and get back to me with it in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Can we give a clap offering to the Lord? Tell that lady. At first I woke up, I said, this looks like Mutugi, but it was a woman. It was not a man. And Alex is not a woman. <laughs> Praise the Lord, somebody. The prophetic word is so powerful that when you're about to give up and you remember it, it charges you like a superman. You know what I like? Can we go back to this portion of scripture that we're reading, reading that about the jail? The first portion, Act chapter 12 there. I want we get to verse 9 or 8, 9. Are you ready? And we're going to close. We're going to eat. And the angels, and the angels said, gird up. Okay, go back again. Go, no, no, not back. Forward, sorry. Forward. Yes. Went out and followed him. Da, 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 da. The angel and brought and saw a vision. Next, verse 10. Nice. When they were past the first, and the second, this is for many people, and I want you to hear it. In the prophetic world, I will declare it, okay? Are you ready? Yes. Are you ready? Yes. You know, when they brought you to jail, they passed you through this very gate. And the people saw you. I am saying... In your moment of difficulties or weaknesses and shame, it was not in the back door. Hmm? Was it in the back door? It was in the front door. Everybody know your situation. They know how many times you divorced, how many times you failed, how many times you were broke, how many times you were needy, how many times. They know all your stories. Today, on the 1st of July, God is about to reverse something. Now, God is saying, the very people who saw you in your weak time, they are about to see you also, the same way they saw you going down, they're about to see you coming up in the name of Jesus. Are you hearing me, somebody? They will witness also your rise. The rise of the man. They thought that you will die on the first prison, you didn't die. Second prison, you didn't die. Third prison, you didn't die. Fourth prison, they said this is over. But they are about to have a surprise. Because you are about to come out from the same gate that you went in. They will witness what they had seen. They will see the opposite in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. From today, you will never be again a mocking stock for your generation. You will be an example for your generation. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. God will make them swallow the world. I'm going somewhere. Now, are you ready for this one? Don't miss this. There is a door that is about to open. I just saw it so clearly as I'm reading this verse. Did you see what is written? It says, and the door opened out. How? Uh, how? On his what? I say on his what? On his what? In other words, you don't need to apply pressure. The door decides on its own. The door takes a decision. The way this guy is, when he was going in, somebody opened me. They pushed me in. But now he's coming out. I cannot remain close. Because he is different than when he went in. 
You went in, but you are coming out more dangerous than the devil never seen you. I say you went in broke. You are coming out rich. You went in sick. You are coming out strong. You went in shame. You are coming out in glory. Somebody say, I receive. The door opened up on his own accord. Somebody say, on his own accord. This job is coming your way on his own accord. This business is coming your way in your own accord. This promotion is coming your way on his own accord. This breakthrough is coming your way on his own accord. Nobody needs to push anymore. On his own accord. That's the season we are in. I said, get ready. Save your energy. You don't need to push doors anymore. On his own accord, they have to open. You know the rest of the story? He arrived at the house where they were praying. And he knocked at the door. Kutu, 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 kutu. They say, what the heck is going on? They look, they see Peter. They say, hey, we are praying for him. You know today, your answer is knocking at your door. Yeah. Your answer is knocking at your door, Ebony. Your answer is knocking at your door, Dio. Your answer is knocking at your door. Your answer is knocking at your door, Mama. Mandala bagadaga shikiti. And you said, you are Esther. Yeah. As you said, you are Esther. Come here. You are Esther. Somebody say, welcome Esther. Amen. She is a star. She is a lighthouse for her family. I pray for you and the, word, the Lord give me a word. And the Lord said, sometimes things have to be worse before they get better. Why? Because when they get worse, the glory increase. Now, the attack on the family, are you hearing me? The attack on the family is not for destruction. It's for strengthening. The Lord said, there is things that you think that are, is hiding for you, for, from you. There are things you feel like, God, why are you hiding this from me? You say that. You say that to God. Why are things hiding? Yeah. Did you not say that? Yes. Okay. Now God wants me to tell you, I am not hiding them from you. I'm hiding them for you. Are you catch that? Yes. I am not hiding it from you. I am hiding it for you. Yes. What God going to do in your family through you? In fact, let me add this word on it. You are not the oldest in the flesh, but you are the oldest in the spirit. Wow. Here is another word. The same way there is a name in the spirit, the same way there is an age in the spirit. You were born older in the natural to be his father in the natural. But God in his mind, you existed already. So I tell people, who's the oldest among you? My father can call me dad. Because I'm older than him in the authority of the thing of the Spirit. Amen. God said, do not hesitate now to rise up with a new anointing. Not thinking I'm the youngest, so I should not talk. My God, my brothers and my sisters, the oldest one, they should be leading this. No, 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 no. This is over from today. Amen. And I pray the same way Esther did not lose her voice. Your voice will not be lost. You will speak the counsel of God like the elders because you are the elders according to the spirit. Fear not for I am with you. The favor that was on Esther is upon you. Esther put an end to a genocide. You will put an end to the catastrophe of your family to the glory of the Father in Jesus' name. Say I receive it in Jesus' name. Somebody give a clap offering to the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I feel like mama come here with the glasses. Stay there. Mama, I want to touch your ears. You know why I'm touching your ear today? So that you will stop listening to the wrong voices and begin to hear the right voice. You catching me? God shows me when I was in the pulpit, there's too much pressure on you. Too much. And the source is not the health body, not just the surrounding. It's the whisper 
of too many voices. So as I put my hand on your ears, we're going to cancel every strange voice. And we're going to anoint this year by the Spirit of the Lord and by the touch that you will begin now to hear the voice of God. Yeah. You know everything that you feel complicated? It will become simple. Say with me, Lord. Say, Lord, simplify my life. Father, let it be so. I counsel every strange voice. And I stir up and activate her spiritual ears to hear the voice of Abba. So her life will be simplified. Even right now, let it be a surge of joy in Jesus' mighty name. Somebody say amen. amen. Hallelujah, somebody. Okay, we're going to go eat, but one more person. Yeah. The mamale. Marcel's, Marcel's baby girl. Marcel Honey Tomato. Come here. Elise, come here. You know how much Jesus loves you. Lift up your hand like this and drop them down. That's a prophetic gesture. God said, your hands have been lifted up for so long. You are fight and you are tired of fighting. Drop your hands. Fight no more. Because there is a change of season coming. That's it. There's a change of season coming. You don't need to wrestle anymore. You don't need to fight. Drop your hands. He will fight for you. And he will turn around what no man can turn around. Amen. This is his duty. Today God said, the ball is in my camp. Let me score a goal for you. Amen. Hallelujah, somebody. Amen. The ball is his camp. Let him score a goal for you. I feel strength of shame. Come here, my intercessor, my daughter, come here. Is she beautiful? Just put your hand together for her. God wants you to know that he has found you faithful. It's not a word of a man. This is the oracle from the Lord. The past is past. You don't need to hold on it. Today, God want to finalize once and for all these very things that just refuse to let you go free. I watched you. I saw the garment of sackcloth. Your son is gone years ago. But yet you are still mourning. And nobody knows. You are a prayerful woman. And sometimes it can be a good hiding place. But today I undress you from your sackcloth. And I prophesy that your mourning has come to an end once and for all. In the name of Jesus Christ. Fear not. I introduce today a new season. Mando si calabash. Stand up now. I want you to take one step forward. The Lord say, as you take this step forward, you're stepping out of the old and you're stepping in in the new. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. There is so many opportunities that you have missed. So many. Even right now as I'm speaking to you, you're going, I'm feeling better, but those opportunities, they are coming back. Amen. Even greater. Amen. It's coming back again. Amen. Even greater. Amen. They are coming back again. Amen. Even greater. Amen. They are coming back. I call them forth in the name of Jesus. Thank you for a surge of joy in her heart in the name of Jesus Christ. Come by to give a hand to the Lord this morning. I feel somebody 
here. It's another court case. A file in the court. You have a file in the court. You're here. A file in the court. A file in the court. Somebody file a file. Lift up your hand. Don't, when you hear the word, don't hesitate to lift up your hand. Yes. Stand up. Sit down, man, uh, uh, Papa. Come here. No, sit down. Sit down, sir. Your time is coming. There is another word for you. This is for her. You know, there's a lot of things that are tangling down on the legs. And it makes you difficult to move. You're an achiever. But you're stuck. How can I move if I have a court case? If I have a file, I'm fighting. You know, I see a court and I see a hand that move files. Bring it here. Now, I saw a red flag and I saw a green flag. And your file was moved to the green. That's what I saw as a picture. I mean, whatever decision will be taken, it will be to your advantage. So fear no more and know that God has settled the case for you. Now begin to dream because the case is settled. God bless you. Give a hand to Lord. Papa, come here. Who is this one standing by you? My employee. Your employee. What do you do for a living? Uh, I'm in the healthy nutrition. Okay. That's why you look so sharp. All right? <laughs> you know, God has a word for you. Simple one. I see you hiding in, at, under a tent. Just like somebody who is just hiding somewhere. Don't want to be seen too much. Yeah. Don't want to be known. I don't want to be vocals. I don't want the attention to be on me. But you know what? Moses couldn't hide. They put him in the basket. The crocodile couldn't eat him. Why are you hiding when God wants you to be public? That Eden will help your business. So today, I want you to make a covenant with God. And the covenant will be that way. Lord, like Saul, I Get out of the luggages. Saul hid in the luggages because he was to be a king. He was so intimidated. God want to raise you up, but you're afraid to succeed. So you hide. I don't want the attention. Can we put an end to that today? Okay. Lift up your hand. Lift up your hand. Say, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus I will no longer hide. I will no longer. What you call me to, what you call me to I will do, will do with all my heart. Such an influence, such a spirit of influence in you. God has given you just that grace to influence people, to be able to move people, such a leadership gift that is upon you. But today, I uncover you. I give you strength by the Spirit of God, and I restore the voice that has been stolen from you. The brokenness in your heart, I recover and I restore by the Spirit of prophecy in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. Somebody give a clap offering to the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Let's stand up on our feet, church. There's a word of prophecy that you just remember. Did you? That was given to you years ago. Either by somebody or in the word of God or through a dream, through a vision, by the million ways God can speak to people. There is area where you feel like, God, you have forgotten about me. That word will give you life right now. That word will give you life. Let we begin to play something. 
That word will give you light. We're going to make it a short one. Right now, lift up your hand. Begin to thank God for that word. Begin to thank God for that word. That specific word. It can be more words that have been buried. Now, the Holy Spirit just reminded you of those words. Don't think it's by accident. Begin to play something, please. Thank you. Close your eyes and begin to allow the Holy Spirit to remind you of that word. There's such an atmosphere of the power of God in this house. That word is becoming alive. You will prophesy it. That's what I'm trying you to, to get. So begin to remember that word and begin to thank God for that word. Begin to ponder on that word. Begin to mold that word in your mind, in your spirit. Begin to think about it. Begin to remember that word. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Spirit of remembrance. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for reminding, remembering, reminding Reminding, reminding us, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord Jesus. 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 Related to your family, related to your calling, related to your future, begin to to mold, to ponder on these words. Hallelujah. Yes, it's his voice that spoke. That word didn't die. That word did not go dying. That word is still alive. That word is still potent. That word is still powerful. That word is still real. It is still true. And it's still here for you. It is your word. It bear your name. It bear your destiny. It bear your promise. In the name of Jesus. Now open your mouth and begin to prophesy that word over your life. Over your children's life. Come on, prophesy. Speak it forth. Speak it forth. Speak it forth. Speak it forth. Yes, God said, Lord, you said, Lord, you spoke to me. Lord, you showed me. Lord, you revealed to me. Begin to speak it forth. Don't get distracted. Just begin to speak it forth. Begin to speak it forth. It will begin to give you energy. It will begin to give you joy. It will begin to give you peace. The anointing will begin to increase around you. Speak that word with faith. Speak it with boldness. Speak it and believe it. Hallelujah. It is your word. It's not a lie. It is not a man to lie. It is true. Speak it because it's the truth. Come in agreement with heaven. Speak it forth. Proclaim it. Declare it. Release it. In the name of Jesus Christ. Say, Lord Jesus. Everybody say, Lord Jesus. Thank you for the promise and for the word. Today, I believe it. I receive it. And it's now. And it's now. And it is now. And it is now. It is fulfilled. I believe it. It is now. It is now. In Jesus' name. Let me give you a testimony. Short one. I'm thinking about it because I don't want to give certain details, you know. If, if for the live stream can stop now, live stream can stop. I, I don't want to give certain details. I, I was complaining about NDP. That's where God spoke to me too about office. 